As a mom and now as a teacher, I am concerned about school safety, aren't we all? As a reporter, I've covered more school shootings in my 28-year career in journalism that I care to talk about. I'm always interested in ways to make our schools safer, and with technology, that may now be happening. Brett Titus is the CEO of LifeSpot, which is a growing safety program for law enforcement and agencies and schools. Brett, really good to see you. So fill us in. What is LifeSpot? Well, good to see you. Thanks for having me. You know, LifeSpot is um, a technology that is going to save lives for any kind of mass critical incident, any kind of active shooter. Um, basically, it solves five, not just one, but five of the major challenges that we face in today's society during every active shooter event. And it's simple to use. It works off your phone. And that's what I found was missing is that we're not trying to solve the problems that we see every single time there's an active shooter event. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about that then. What, what are the five things versus the one that we need to be focusing on that, that you do? The number one thing during a critical incident and an active shooter, the number one thing that we need to fix is response time. We've got to get the good guys there faster than we do today. Part of that is the second challenge is notification. To speed up that uh, response time, we've got to notify everybody. And when I say everybody, well, who needs to know? 911 needs to know, the officers on the street need to know, the, the, their command staff, somebody needs to quarterback it, they need to know. And then everyone on that campus, everyone in that school needs to know. And in today's day and age, there's no platform. There's no way to do that in a timely manner. Then you have location. Location is another problem. Where is the threat at? Where did it start? And for law enforcement, what's the fastest, best route to get there? Then you have communication. Uh, communication is an absolute nightmare, as you know from, from reporting on these things. You'll have several hundred staff and students inside a school, and the minute that uh, uh, event happens, that crisis happens, everyone's going to dial 911. Give me any dispatch center in the metro area, and you're looking at maybe a dozen at best 911 call takers and dispatchers to handle those calls. 12 people cannot get the information from hundreds that are trying to call in. So the communication aspect of it can be a nightmare as well. Then you have the reunification. Once it's all done, we don't know everybody that's inside. We have no way to communicate to tell everybody, hey, mm. the threat is not over. Stay where you're at. Let us know if you have information. Or it is over, and we're going to bring you out safely in a much more organized manner. So those five challenges they have hit us on every single one of these shooting events that we've had, and we haven't done anything about it until now. Well, let's, uh, looking for my phone, I, here it is. So everybody has a phone. and you're saying that LifeSpot is an app that they, so I'm going to be teaching at a school and I would have LifeSpot app on my phone. And then how would it work from there? Give me an example of me, like being a teacher in a school with the app. Sure. So you'll have the icon, just like any other uh, app icon on your phone. And what we do is we geofence your location. So it only works when you're at your school. So you can't set it off and use it if you're at home because you're angry at your neighbor. So it only works when you're at school. You perceive a threat. You press the button, you swipe, and within three to five seconds, all four of those groups, everyone on campus, the police officer that's just right around the corner, his command staff and 911 are all notified within three to five seconds. Mm -hmm. So right there, we have solved a huge problem of notification and response time. Once that happens, then it gives you all kinds of information via law enforcement through your phone, via text messaging. When 911 system is overloaded and full, we now can speak with the, the survivors and victims inside um, can get information from law enforcement and give information as well. So now the communication piece is solved as well. So at the same time, I would be getting the same information as would all of the hundreds or thousands of students on campus 
we would be getting that communication through our phones, through the app, where to go, what to do. Uh, so this is information all would you get? Yeah, so this is uh, for teachers and staff only. Um, depending on, uh, for example, college campuses, um, we are going to give some of that information to some of the students, depending on their age. But for uh, a high school, for example, um, it would only be staff and teachers. And what that does is now we have hundreds, depending on the size of the school, hundreds of eyes and ears that can set that alarm, that can notify everybody within seconds, opposed to uh, trying to hit a panic button or a hardwired something that you have to get to. So this is just for staff and teachers only. And then we empower them through the app. We give them a bunch of information that they otherwise would not get to make a better educated decision of, do I just lock down, fortify my position, or should I get away? Should I grab as many kids as I can? I'm out in the parking lot and run into a neighborhood where it's safe. So yeah. we're empowering them giving them more information with the technology to make a better decision. So the students don't have the app. It is just faculty at the school administrators and teachers. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, and, and then what about law enforcement? So does this require that law enforcement in that district or in that area is in on this system as well? Yes. They will have what we call the Responder app. So it's a simple app, easy to download. Again, we're on Google Play and, and Apple Store. We verify the officer, they have it on their phone. Opposed to waiting for a victim to call 911, ask a series of questions, that's if they're calm enough to give the location. And then that has to go out to the officers, come all the way back around. The officers are gonna get it on their phone within three to five seconds with an overhead view of that campus and a big red dot showing where that alert was started. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the law enforcement has been great. Our local uh, law enforcement leadership, uh, Douglas County, Rappel County, Weld County, Elbert County, those sheriffs have just fallen in love with this and they've been so supportive because we've solved those challenges that they know they face every single time one of these things happen. So yeah. local law enforcement has been amazing. Can you use an example of um, some of the situations that we've seen? Unfortunately, you and I are both in Colorado, and I know this could be used worldwide, but unfortunately, Colorado has seen more school shootings than most places. Um, we both remember Columbine, Arapaho High School, the, most recently the STEM school shooting. Use one of those situations, if you could, to talk about how this would have been used, response time, and how it could have looked different. Yeah, you know, um, being a proud Coloradan, it absolutely breaks my heart to think about all the incidents that we've had here. It's just, it's, it's horrific. And I, I try to wrap my mind around it and I can't, I, I just can't, I can't figure it out. So the way it would help now, again, is number one response time. Um, we, 911 is great. 911 has, of course, changed the world, changed our community for filtering things out. But in these mass incidents where our kids, especially our kids are in jeopardy, we've got to do something more than waiting several seconds or, or, or minutes perhaps before we get the word to the good guys. Mm -hmm. So any of those instances, um, that, that, that message would have went out right away. Also to the people that are there, as you know, you've done enough of these that there have been times where other staff members didn't even know there was a shooting or something happened and they weren't even sure what happened until several minutes later and it was far over. Yeah. We can't do that anymore. We now know there is technology that we have built that fixes all of these problems. So any of those incident, uh, incidents that you're referring to, the, the app would have sped up response time, gave everybody communication, location, all of those problems that we've seen would have been fixed. Yeah, you, I mean, you think about the teacher who knows there's something going on just because kids are talking about it, but they're actually hiding in a classroom or hiding with kids in a closet or they're somewhere, I just hate thinking about these situations, but they don't know what's going on. They have to look at their phones and try to get news updates um, to figure out what's happening in the building where they actually are. 
So they would be able to look at the app and actually be able to communicate with law enforcement where they are in the school at the time. Law enforcement would see that, right? Correct. They are real-time GPS. They can even, you know, GPS can be off sometimes. So we have a feature on our technology, again, technology, that they can set their location within that school. They can move their dot to give law enforcement a more accurate uh, location of where we're at. Let me take that one step further, um, injury. Uh, God forbid we ever see uh, anyone ever lose their life from, from bleeding out or can't get medical in there, uh, i.e. at Columbine and, and uh, Mr. Sanders. With our technology, these staff and teachers can hit a button on the app. It goes directly to law enforcement. They will see a red dot. And a red dot to law enforcement means somebody is seriously injured. Mm. We can already start to send resources to that location because the, perhaps this the person can't get through to 911 because the lines are busy well, and they have yeah. somebody seriously injured, somebody with a gunshot. Yeah. We can now instantly, instantly show law enforcement we have injured people here, send medics. It's just amazing to me that this doesn't exist. I mean, I know it makes so much sense to you and to us, you know, we see high technology and crime online and in shows and we're like, well, of course that exists. And it doesn't until you've created this. So um, I, I wanted to ask you, because I didn't start off with this, that you were in law enforcement for what, 30 years or more? Yes. And I know in speaking to you in the past, you've seen over 3000 tactical operations in your career. And that's really what's played into this. I mean, you're technically retired, but this was something out of a passion and out of a need and out of your experience and everything you've seen in these situations. You're like, we can do something about this with high technology. We've got the technology. We just have to implement it and then get school systems to buy into it. Am I right? Yep. A absolutely. Um, I I'll tell you, I had a very blessed career. I had an amazing career. Uh, I spent the last 21 plus years on Denver's full-time SWAT team, worked with some of the most amazing uh, um, men on the planet when it comes to sacrifice and, and risking their lives. I was fortunate enough to be part of that. But once again, um, when it was time to take this to the next level, um, it, it's, it's amazing to be able to serve and serve our community, serve and protect and now to do it in a different aspect, and I can actually see it. I can actually talk to the staff and teachers that are using our product now, and they thank me. And it's amazing that I'm actually touching more lives and able to save far more people. And again, believe me, hopefully no one ever uses my app. I hope it never goes off. But I think, unfortunately, I think we all know that's not reality. So yeah, to, to take all of those years of experience and see the same problem and to actually sit here with you today and say, we can make it better, we can do something more is uh, uh, beyond, beyond belief. So I know that this is relatively new, um, that you're just rolling out all of this technology you've been working on for years. Um, but I wanna talk about school systems and other things that they're doing. You know, we, we hear, and I've certainly reported on hundreds of things from, uh, bulletproof backpacks to um, metal detectors to all kinds of different ways uh, to protect our kids and teachers at schools. But those things, do you think that some of those things are helpful or how, how would you promote this over some of those things? And let's talk about the price of this over some other things out there. Sure. So uh, th there is no one answer, and I will never stand here in front of you and say our app is the answer for it all. Um, this is not going to prevent uh, any of these shootings. Uh, prevention is that's out of my league. Uh, Got to figure out how to prevent. Um, but what I will tell you is the research that I've done. Um, some of our school districts, even locally, uh, kind of breaks my heart. They're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars with tools and equipment and things that if you put it in a real life context, real basic common sense, what's really going to happen, a lot of this stuff is just irrelevant. It's not going to do anything. If it can solve one challenge, I, I guess that's 
better than none. But when you look at LifeSpot and what we do, we are solving five, five huge challenges. So some of the things that I've seen out there, um, you know, hide kids under ballistic blankets. Are you kidding me? Um, systems that will lock down the entire school, lock every door. I, when uh, we're, we're, we're empty nesters now, but when my son was in school, that scared me because I would have visions of somebody not knowing the circumstance hits that button during an active shooter. Is it my son that is locked outside with the shooter? Is it my son that can't get in? So when you look at security protocols as a whole, the number one thing, the number one thing is we need to empower the teachers and the staff to make better educated decisions. And if part of that is life spot and the technology, giving them more information, then that's where it needs to go. But I'm, I'm frustrated in the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars spent on things that are just not practical and realistic. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see your frustration with that. And you know, everybody's got good intentions with these things, but where's the bigger picture in uh, really protecting and, um, and communicating. I mean, I hear that from you in this. I love the idea. I mean, frankly, the reason my kids have phones isn't for them to make calls to their friends. It's so that I can communicate with them so that I, I can see, uh, you know, when yeah. they have a need or they need a ride or whatever. And I have that ability, but shouldn't in an emergency, um, they, that, that device that I give them be able to be used for emergencies. Uh, and, and with every, most kids, I guess, more importantly, most um, uh, administrators and staff having that app, they would be able to take care of the kids in their immediate area by informing law enforcement. Well, let's talk about price for a minute. You know, every school district, and I've worked uh, in education news also for many, many years as an education reporter, um, they have to decide where they're going to spend their money. You just talked about other ways that school districts are spending money to try to protect their students. I'm um, in private schools too, but you're a private organization, which of course schools hire private organizations all the time to supply them with the things that they need. But how much is this going to be? Is it going to be a big cost? Because we know schools, as many businesses, are hurting right now and their budgets are tight. Yeah. It it's one of those things that um, it's just who I am. Yes, we, we are not a nonprofit. We are a corporation. Yes, this, this took some time and some money to, to build, but the mission is the same, whether I was on the street in Denver or today, the mission is the same is let's save as many lives as we can. Take that one step further, our kids. Our kids are the most important asset, the most important resource to us as a community. So we have tried to make this as cheap as we can anywhere from we depending on the number of users we can go as low as 40 cents a month per user which is teachers and staff up to um, smaller schools uh, uh two dollars is the most expensive um for smaller schools so if you have a, a private school 150 staff it would be uh two dollars a month um uh, much larger enough. school districts any of our big counties anywhere from 40 to 50 cents because it's it's about the numbers if we can get this into 50,000 hands that's 50,000 eyes and ears that can set the alarm and give information to those that need to know instantly so we want to keep it as cheap as we can wow so it could be paid by the district it could also be paid by parents um individually for their student but lots of ways to fund that i would think that um, even parent organizations. I'm, I'm a parent. I, I would be like, sure, I'm making donations uh, to the school for all kinds of programs. That would be something I'd be happy to make a donation for school safety. Sure. And we also, um, just who I am again, that we are donating it. We give it to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool, I, it, it um, boy, it gets me choked up to even think about. We've had a few now law enforcement agencies that said, hey, listen, this, we, we want this so bad, we will find money out of our budget to help the school pay for it. Wow. That's community. That's wow. the way it should be. Let's figure out what we can do. Everybody pitch in. Let's make it as safe as we can. So, so uh, uh, the, those agencies really stepped up and said, hey, we'll, we'll find money out of our budget 
to help pay for it for these schools. What about just the, you know, we'll get on a Zoom call sometimes and somebody freezes or the technology doesn't work. Um, how do you prevent that? I mean, technology has bugs. We know that. And that's one of the first things that we teach. The most important thing, remember that empowerment that I talked about, right? One of the things that we teach, I love LifeSpot. I'm the one that thought of it. I know it's gonna save lives, but the reality of it is, is what we tell everybody is your phone does not save you. Your technology does not save you because it can. How many times you got four bars, you go to send a text and it's spinning? Yeah. Who knows why? That is technology. So what we preach and teach is what saves you is up here. Empower them to make better educated decisions. Don't lump yourself under one umbrella like several of these school protocols where they'll just blast out the same message to everybody. That's not right. Empower, these are the most brightest and brilliant and caring people on the planet. Our, our educators, they're taking care of our kids. Let's just teach them to make decisions. So that's what we tell everybody. Don't rely on your phone rely on this and rely on, on your instincts and you'll be much safer. The phone is just a tool. Yeah. And that's just what I was going to say is it's a tool. You have to be smart and you have to, of course, rely on those teachers, administrators, whoever is there making those decisions. But the backup that we have right now is still there. You could still call 911, but to know that this technology is, is there and pretty reliable. There are chances that we have bugs in technology, but it's another layer of protection and communication that certainly doesn't hurt. Well said. You're absolutely right. Again, any tool, anything that we can give to help these teachers and staff to make our yeah. kids safer, give it to them. Give it to them if it makes sense and it's uh, again, you can't rely on it to, to the nth degree, but you can be relatively comfortable that your phone is going to work. If you can't dial 911 because you have no service or you're in a bad spot, you can't use our app either. So yeah. there you go. Now, what right. are we left with? We're left with our decision making. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm just really anxious to see what happens um, as you start rolling out um, from elementary level to high schools to even colleges. And do you have plans to implement this outside of schools? Yeah, we're actually talking with um, several corporations right now. We have um, uh, a law firm uh, that's, uh, we've done some uh, contract work before as far as safety protocols. Um, we'll be in law firms, uh, hospitals, um, anywhere where you're going to have multiple victims that the system, the 911 system today and the notification system just doesn't work, that's where LifeSpot will go. Yeah, what about um, like concerts or stadiums, uh, sporting events? Would it be um, something that could work there as well? Those are people who aren't there every day, like in a school or a corporation. It can, because again, it's geofence. So we would assign that person in that phone to that specific geofence. So uh, if you're an employee and you work all the, the abs games or what have you, it will just be on your phone, but it only works when you're at work. So God forbid uh, there's an employee, a, a parking manager um, sees somebody pull a rifle out of a trunk. They can hit the app within three to five seconds. It goes to law enforcement, it goes to everyone inside that building, all the other staff, and that staff can then communicate to the patrons, hey, everybody run this way, come this way, mm -hmm. because now they know there's a threat. And again, going to law enforcement and those that need to know yeah. three to five seconds. Yeah, and one thing I'm intrigued by that I think you mentioned earlier, I read, is that the law enforcement in the area, the nearest one, would it be off duty or even on on or off duty, would see the threat and they might be two blocks away or around the corner or whatever, but it would go to whoever's closest to respond quickly. That's correct. Yep. It goes to uh, every cop. Uh, again, depends on the jurisdiction. Um, for example, Weld County gave it to all of their deputies. Um, uh, Rappahoe County gave it to most of, and then their command staff. So it just depends on their jurisdiction. Yeah. We don't care. We will give it to anyone in law enforcement that wants it. And then they will set up their own um, uh, response protocols of if you're off duty, on duty, those types Got of it. things. But again, sure. just letting the masses know. Yeah. 
Well, it seems like an overdue piece of technology. So take someone who's been in the industry and understands the need for it for so many years to actually do it. And uh, I'm, again, really excited to see where things go with LifeSpot. And I'd like to catch up with you in the months to come and hear about it. And God forbid we ever have to use it, but it feels good as a parent and teacher and a community member to know that people are thinking about these things. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great to talk to you. Take care.